Hey. Hello. I don't know what day it is. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> so how much protein should you eat to lose weight specifically? That's what we're going to talk about. Okay. I'm here. Good. I'm going to let you lead today because you always think that my goofy silliness is too That's a little introduction. What's up, y'all? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. This is why my silliness and goofiness you know, you, is necessary. You have time to prepare. You just threw me on the spot there. I never. You think I prepare my silliness? <laughs> Don't. Definitely do not. That just is what you see is what you get. <laughs> all right. Let's jump into it. Okay. So, <clears throat> protein is important. I get it. Protein is important. Like, duh. Everybody says yeah. it. Everybody is. But, but like, how much do you really need? And does it change for weight loss? Or is it something that you should always eat the same amount of? Those are all good questions. Now, it might seem like it would be really helpful to know the exact number of grams to eat. And I'm actually going to give you an answer on that. Um, but there's an even more more practical way to make sure that you get enough protein and we're going to cover all that too so be sure to stick around for all of that don't just stay until you hear the number of like oh here's how i figure it out because we're gonna we're gonna cover a lot more than that make a lot more practical advice for actually how much protein you should be eating specifically for losing weight now for anyone who hasn't watched our videos before what we're doing here is we're kind of going over a blog that i've written and we'll go into more detail. We'll discuss it. In fact, I'm really curious to hear what Megan has to say about this because she hasn't read it yet. <laughs> we have no and idea what we're doing. I, I uh, definitely consulted her on a lot of this, but I'm sure she'll have some stuff to say as we go through it. So we'll dive in a little bit deeper, but if you'd rather just read the blog, let us know and we'll send you a link to that once, totally. it's, once it's up and pub published. Um, so, okay. <clears throat> Let's... Publish? Published. I've got to call you there. Yeah. All right. Successful weight loss. I want to talk about this for a second as you kick the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember years ago, I would chug whey protein shakes twice a day, just because all of the fitness people that I was following, that's kind of what they were doing, or at least they would say, you gotta eat a ton of protein. And so I thought that that's what I had to do. And as a person whose stomach doesn't tolerate a ton of dairy, <laughs> made for some unpleasant experiences, which, I won't, you know, go that's into all, detail. That's all. That's enough. People, <laughs> yeah. know, people know what that means. <laughs> so one, but one reason protein recommendations vary so much is because there's just there is a lot of bad information out there, mm -hmm. bad nutrition information. That's one reason. But the other reason is that even good protein recommendations can change depending on the context. So, for instance. The Food Nutrition Board in the, the United States recommends eating a certain amount of protein just to not get sick or die. But a professional bodybuilder who wants to build as much muscle as humanly possible may be advised to eat three times that amount. So not dying and building superhuman amounts of muscle are clearly very different goals. Yeah. Neither one is wrong per yeah. se. But they won't provide super realistic guidelines for the average person who simply just wants to lose some weight and be a little bit healthier. Yeah, us. That's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So our advice that we're about to give is not for bodybuilders or professional athletes, but it also isn't for anyone whose only goal is to just have a quality of life that's one step up above not dead. <laughs> like we want to actually enjoy our lives. And that's the people who we work with too. So if you want your weight loss journey to be truly successful so that, and, and here's how I'm defining success is that you have actual fat loss. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you're not losing a ton of lean mass. Like you're, you're not losing a bunch of muscle or a bunch of bone loss. Um, and, you, and also your results are sustainable. So that it's not just temporary short lived weight loss. And also that you're building up healthy habits so that you actually feel stronger and have more energy, just feel better in general. 
if all of those things are what you're more concerned about, then it's definitely important to get a certain amount of protein every day. So we're not going to talk about why, by the way, we've got other resources we can point you to for that. But I just wanted to mention that if, if you're looking for successful weight loss in those ways, then you definitely do need a certain amount of There's protein. so many good whys. Like there are a lot of good whys. And you can list one or two of them now if you want. My favorite one right now because of my age <laughs> yeah. is getting uh, ready for menopause. Like it's, it's coming down the road and I know that building muscle and eating lots of protein is going to help with those symptoms. And so my goal right now is to decrease any potential symptoms. And so that's okay. my favorite right now. That's a great one. Okay. Yep. So quick disclaimer the I'm about to give you an equation that's going to tell you exactly how many grams of protein you can eat each day or should eat each day. I say exactly. It's it's a rough estimate, really. But but I do not recommend actually trying to count grams of protein. So that's something... I don't count grams of protein. Right. This is not something we do with our clients is count grams of protein. The practical step is going to come in a minute after this. But you have to start here first just to get an idea. So I'm, I'm laying this out so that you can see it. And then we'll go on to what you can actually do about it in a minute. So let's get into the equation. So first of all, a common guideline is people, and it's been it's been popular for a long time to say. In fact, I used to say it was you should lots lots of gyms I know say it too. Lot yeah, still say it. So it's it's very popular to say you should eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight. This advice is flawed for a lot of reasons. Um, I, I could go into more than what I listed here, but I think I'll just give the one. The, the one really big reason right now it, why it's flawed is because someone who is 50 pounds overweight doesn't need to eat 50 extra pounds. Grams. So yeah, grams, <laughs> grams of protein. You shouldn't eat 50 extra pounds of protein either. But just because you're 50 pounds, I mean, imagine just like, real life scenario, someone 300 pounds has a lot of weight to lose. They don't need to be eating 300 grams of protein. But even if you're only yeah. 20 pounds overweight, you don't need 20 extra grams of protein. So, so that one gram per pound thing, it's fine to eat extra protein, but what it can do is it can take um, a difficult goal and make it, it put it even more out yeah. of reach. Yeah, because if you're having 300 grams of protein all day, it's gonna feel like you're just eating protein all day long. Yeah. And it's, it's gonna be hard and it's gonna be a barrier to reach your goals. Yep, and again, there's nothing wrong with it, like from a health standpoint, it's just, practically speaking, it's not gonna work for a lot of people. So <clears throat> a better guideline is to eat around one gram of protein per pound of lean mass. So the amount of weight that in, is in your body that isn't fat. Now that may sound super complicated, but it's it's not, I'm gonna simplify it all here. So stick with me for a second. Oh, well, maybe you're gonna say this. Yeah. But even if you don't know it specifically, mm -hmm. you can use a, a ballpark. Yeah. Okay, so you're, yep. you're probably gonna get into that. We will, but but you're right. Yeah, all of this is ballpark. Like it, because it doesn't like, Truthfully, whatever the exact number is, you can be within a range. It doesn't matter anyway. Um, but here's why it's it's easier than what it sounds like. So this equation here, all you have to do is if you've ever if you've ever gone to a store and and figured out the price of a discounted item in a shopping trip, you can do this equation. It's very easy. There's a lot of people who can't do that. Well, I'm gonna lay it out, I'm gonna lay it out to you, even if that's difficult for you. I'm going to give it to you, so we it's super super easy. Yeah, we could write it on. Just trust me here. If you don't like math, you, if the, we're going to get into the next step anyway, and you'll be fine. But this will lay it out. So what you do is you would take your weight, you would discount it by whatever percentage of body fat you carry, and I'll, I'll talk about how to figure that out later. Um, and then, so for just for example, if you weigh 200 pounds and you think you're at 25% body fat, you would take your weight and multiply it by 0.75 because if you're 25% fat, then you're 75% lean mass. So 75% of 200 is 150. So the simple equation is your weight times your lean mass, and then that equals the total number of grams of protein you would eat. So if you're 200 pounds times 0.75, that equals 150. You'd need to eat around 150 grams of protein um, on a daily basis. 
Is this the right Are you way? writing that out? Is that the right way to write it out? And then I'll put it put it through in the comments. No, weight times you your said, weight times your lean mass. Oh, you that will tell you how many grams of protein. Okay. There you go. So <clears throat> again, we're going to get into easier, even easier in a second. But as far as determining your body fat percentage, first thing I'm going to say is do not trust your home scale. If you've got one that estimates <laughs> your body fat percentage, that's 100% worthless. But even machines that you see at gyms or at in, health stores or... In body, body scan, pods got, pod scan. Yeah, all of those are completely inaccurate. Like laughably inaccurate or like cryably inaccurate because <laughs> you, you either laugh or you cry at how inaccurate they are like it's <laughs> it's it's bad um so instead what you can do is you can literally just do a google image search for estimating body fat percentage just look through the images and t then kind of just take a guess and go okay that's roughly what i look the like honest guess yeah that's got to be gender specific too because mm -hmm. men and women carry very different amounts of body fat um so is that accurate? Not, not totally, but it's, it's good enough. It's going to get you close enough. And then if you are looking at these images and you're like, oh, I don't know, maybe I'm 30%, maybe I'm 35, somewhere in between, just go with the more conservative estimate. You say you're around 30 and that's fine because it's going to get you close enough. That is how you could figure out how to do it. Or you could skip the math altogether and go to the next step. So My vote. the even easier route. So like I said, you can do the math, you can calculate your lean mass if you want. If you really are just, if you're a numbers person, and you're like, I'd like to know roughly how many grams I can eat. Great, do that. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Most people's lean mass is going to probably fall somewhere in the 100 to 150 pound range. Now, there's exceptions to that. If you're extraordinarily tall and big boned, with like Shaquille O'Neal would be a good example. <laughs> like he's super tall, but he's also very broad shouldered. Or on, you're on the other side and you're super petite, like a, you know, like a women's gymnastics, you know, you're five feet tall and you're very slender, then that's going to be different. Then, mm -hmm. uh, but, but otherwise, outside of the extremes, 100 to 150 grams of protein per day is going to get you probably pretty close. That's where most of our clients fall. Yeah. yeah. And that's because, uh, again, outside of the exceptions, most people's bodies are roughly a similar size. I mean, I know like you and I seem like we're very, very different, but my lean mass and your lean mass is much closer than what people would think, okay. despite the fact that I'm almost a foot taller than you. Yeah. I don't know how much taller than you I am. I'm a head taller. So point being, 100 to 150 grams. <laughs> um, however, getting back to this point, Tracking literal grams of protein every day is very tedious. It's time consuming and it's hard to keep up. Yeah, it's awful basically. Doing math before you eat, scanning things. Okay. That's why we recommend an easier <laughs> approach and it's just as accurate. Um, and that is by tracking palm sized servings of protein. So do you want to explain that just very yeah. quickly? So you use your palm to gauge how much protein you're eating. And so the diameter and the thickness of the size of your palm is pretty proportionate to the protein size that you'll need for each serving and then how many you get, we're gonna talk about. Yeah, so depending on the size of your hand, a palm sized portion averages out to around 20 to 30 grams of protein. So for most people that means like four to seven portions is pretty standard. That's gonna get, depending upon how big you are, like that's gonna get you into that 100 to 150 gram range, four to seven portions per day. And five to six is probably the most common. Like, I, I want to say this yeah. too. If, you know, unless you have experience getting more protein in and you're, you're a pretty regular gym goer, most people are probably eating one to two portions of protein a day. That's what we see before we start working with our clients. Yeah. So work your way up to five or six is a good, good goal. That's something I'm going to say here in just a little bit too. Ha! <laughs> that's good this means the stuff i've written is the, is the stuff that she has told me and we're on the same page so we're good we're good five to six portions is a good like get that in your mind because that's roughly probably where you should be or at least very close to it um if you are i want to say something 
<laughs> go for it again. <laughs> so so uh, we really like that poem eyeballing it because it doesn't have to be super specific and, and counting can be tedious and this is just like oh yeah that's close enough and it, it counts if it's a lean protein or a, a fattier piece of protein it, it just takes into account all the variations and you don't have to worry about the minutia so that's why we love just using your hand to eyeball how much food you're getting. Yeah, and I know it can sound, if you've never done it before, it can sound like, oh, uh, it's just some new thing to learn. But honestly, like our five-year-old can do it. We don't track her portions, so that's not something we're concerned about. But if I say like, hey, you, you go pick out a snack that's a protein, make sure you get a good serving, she knows that it's roughly mm -hmm. that size. And so like literally it is so easy that our children can do it. Yeah. Like, it's once you pick it up, it's, it's that. Which makes nice. it really easy to be sustainable yeah like, that is yeah because you can do it forever because you don't it's literally i mean you're already putting f food on your plate all you have to do is just look and go unless you uh, lose your yeah hand. that's about right unless you lose your hand in a hiking accident then then it would be a little bit tougher yeah. so, okay <laughs> there's ways around that too <laughs> <clears throat> two quick things i want to say about this about the five to six portion guide and i'm <clears throat> losing my voice sorry <clears throat> excuse me need some water? no i'm good um, number one is that if you are an outlier, like if you feel like, uh, I don't know, I'm pretty big or I'm pretty small, maybe that's too much, too little, your hand is probably also going to be bigger or smaller. And so that's going to, your hand is going to reflect the size of your body. And so that's going to give you more grams or less per portion anyway. So yep. it's all built in. So that five to six still is probably pretty close, no matter what. Um, <clears throat> the second thing is you can split those portions up throughout the day. So yes. you don't have to have, you know, five or six in one meal. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be two, two and two. It can be however you want split up among snacks, meals. It does. It doesn't matter. Your, re it's, your results are going to be the same. Yeah, totally. And that kind of leans into the old myth that goes along with the one gram of body fat is that you have to have protein shakes after you work out to like maximize. And for the average person, like Worrying about when you have protein really doesn't matter. It's more for like high level athletes. So that doesn't really apply to the average Joe. Yep. Now, going back to what you were saying earlier is making this your own. So eating enough protein is always important. It's slightly more important during weight loss, but even after weight loss, these guidelines that we're talking about here hold pretty true. Like it might make sense for you to go down to four or five servings per day rather than five or six, maybe. But the point is, it's not a drastic difference. So make sure that you're viewing this as you're building a lifelong habit. This is not a temporary diet strategy. This is not like, okay, I'll eat five or six servings of protein for the next two months and then lose weight and then I'll go back to what I was before. And then all of a sudden you're getting one or two or servings of protein again. It's just going to end up back where you started. Yeah, and back where you started. So this is something that is true for weight loss, but it's also just something that as you build this and you're losing weight, it's going to help you to sustain that weight loss later is getting, is building up this habit. So now, like Megan said, most people struggle to get this much protein and I totally get that. So like I said, I used to chug the protein shakes just to try to get the protein in. And it took me a while to figure out kind of how to do it without destroying my insides <laughs> and our bathroom. <laughs> That's enough. Now though, years later, I actually eat more protein than I need and I, without trying, yeah. like it's just, it's become so natural to me. I don't really even have to think about it. I get more protein than I even need without protein shakes, all because I've created these habits that make it all easier. Yeah, me too. Do not expect to get this right out of the gate. <laughs> so what, what, and you can speak more to this if you want, you've already mentioned a little bit, but is what I recommend is tracking what you eat, start there. See where you're at, because like Megan said, you there's a good chance you're only eating one or two servings of protein a day already. Um, but just track for two weeks. Don't even change anything. Don't go into it going, okay, I'm going to get this in. Just look at what you're already doing. Assess where you're at. See how close you are to getting those five or six portions mm -hmm. every day. If you already eat enough, great. You're there. More than likely, you're going to have a lot of room to improve. And at that point, that's where you can decide, first of all, is losing weight successfully, healthfully, the way that we just defined it earlier, is that important to you? Because if it is, if your health is important to you, 
you can work on this slowly. So you can add in an extra serving, just one extra portion of protein yeah. to your routine. Add That's it in. That's we start with a lot of people. Adding in just one a day? Mm -hmm. yeah. One extra one. We focus on like one meal and then we knock that out of the park. Or sometimes we just focus on one meal and doubling somewhere else. And so yeah. we just kind of lean into what they're already doing. And that's why tracking for a little bit to see where you need to work on is a good idea. Yep. And then you can add another one. So you can each week you can go, okay, now let's add another one. Or each month, depending upon how difficult it is for you. So until you actually hit your mark, you can just build up slowly over mm -hmm. time. You may need to adjust some of your eating strategies. Like you may need to eat more frequently. You may need to find some better snacks. My clients find that when they're actually increasing their protein, they feel full. Mm -hmm. longer and they're snacking less sure and so by the time the next meal comes around they're hungry yeah but it helps them hold over to the next meal and that's always pretty surprising yeah and so what you might find as you do this is that your eating habits kind of just change naturally yeah um again it's not something you're gonna have to obsess over it's just gonna become better because you're doing this um and then eventually it will get easier and get to the point because you built it up over this long period of time eating protein will get to a point where it's just that you don't even have to think about it anymore. So that's, that's really the whole thing. I think that was everything I wanted to say about it. I don't know if you have anything more you want to add. Do you have any thoughts, anything that we didn't cover with this? I know like the whys of why protein is important. I don't know if you have any more you want to talk about with that or not, but no. Okay. Otherwise, this is a great starting point. I mean, like I said, if you want to go and do that equation and figure out like, oh, okay, yeah, I need maybe 140, maybe 120, great. Then you can have that number in your head, that's fine. Or just do the just do the five or six, just go for five or six. <laughs> Palm yeah. size servings, and that's gonna cover it, your bases. This is one of the top three things we start clients with, mm -hmm. for sure. Like top three things to get right, right away. Yeah if not the very first thing. Mm -hmm. Usually, I, I, I didn't want to say always because there's never one one way for anybody to do it. So yeah. definitely top, top. Yeah, it's if it's not the top, it normally, if it, I don't know how I'm trying to say that. Like, it's not always the top, but it often is. So it mm -hmm. kind of is the top. <laughs> I don't That's know. not confusing. No, it's not at all. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if all of this is confusing and you just want help with it, let us know. Yes. This is what we do. We help people do this. We help you figure out how to use the hand guide to reach your goals, to lose weight, to make it all easier. Tell you exactly how many help proteins you need. To make it healthier. Yeah, yeah. To take all the guesswork out so you don't have to figure it out yourself and to get you to a point where you're doing this naturally too, where you're just like, oh, I'm eating this much protein and I don't even have to think about it anymore. Yeah. That's what we do. We can help you get there. So just let us know if you want help with that. Any questions, leave comments, send us a message. Uh, we are happy to answer. Otherwise, yeah. hopefully that helped. And we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Bye.